the best in the game. All the chromosomes are all clumped together on one end, and then there's like seven whole cells. The computer. People want to know what it is that we do here that is the equation. I want my school to be like Lincoln. What do I need to do? Hand me the manual that I can give my staff, and they can just go A, B, C, D down the row, and if they do all of these things, then they're gonna uh, be able to connect with and build these relationships with the kids. and. There is no manual, there is no instruction list. Check that out, so you see. My, my plan is to teach macromolecules today in science. And the process of doing that, I get to have these amazing interactions with kids and recognize their awesome parts. Is that one right there? Oftentimes, because of the chaos and craziness of their lives, that ends up superseding in moments this plan that I started my day out with. So where'd you guys move to? From there we went to Roosevelt Street. No, 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 I mean right now, you just said you moved um, like... Down how, the street. How long ago did you move? A week and a half ago. Oh, that's not really long. So who do you live with now? My mom's with? friend. Your mom's friend? Mm -hmm. But your brother's still getting in trouble there too? Yeah. So what's the deal with that? How come? That's just how he is. Really? Mm hmm he that, gets in trouble almost every day with the sheriff or... Really? Mm -hmm. Have you never gotten in trouble? Has that always been your thing? Yeah. Really? I got in trouble once. That That's was it? when I was 10 or 9. What'd you do? Spray painted Lincoln. Here? Mm -hmm. No! Uh -huh. For reals? You, that yeah. was you? I remember that. Yeah. Actually, I feel like the things that are gonna prevent our students from being successful um, are things that may be so core, they're not academic. Kids that have a hard time regulating emotion, they're gonna explode. What happened at Harvey's? Um, Cody and I got in a fight and we got kicked out. So neither one of you can stay? No. What can I do then as a teacher to help bring them back down out of that place and so they can actually think, so they can process, because you can't learn when you're in that place. When a kid goes off, when a kid has that really intense emotional reaction, um, the thought process of, of all the teachers at this school, uh, I can attest because I've seen them do it, is what's wrong? Like, what, uh, how you doing? Are you okay? You know, um, this isn't your normal behavior. She was gone uh, three days out of the week. She comes and goes. I mean, can you agree that yes, you are a little disruptive in the class? I just don't do the work. Okay, but you don't feel like you're distracting other people? Sit there and say I don't want to do the group. It doesn't say anything, that's all I just say. What is it that makes, what, is it because you just don't like history or what? I don't like history. I don't like Terry. It's too hard. So are you struggling with it, honest? I think that when kids come in here, the, the initial reaction is, you know, are you high? No. I don't smoke many, you know, I don't do any of that. And it's this defensive piece. And it's, like I said, it's because it's taught. It's a learned behavior that you're doing these things and you lie about it. So much of the battle with these kids is, is in getting them to trust you and that the questions that you're asking aren't in an effort to get them in trouble. They're not in an effort to embarrass them, to shame them, to judge them. That it's genuinely trying to draw information about where you are right now in life and how that's working for you. Let's go this route. What, after high school, obviously you're not going to stay in high school forever. Do you, have, do you have any thoughts on what you want to do after you get out of high school? You do, but college is on your radar, right? Yeah. So, I mean, with that as a goal, I mean, even if you don't want to narrow it down, we got to get you graduated from here. Getting these kids honest is, is for me, 90% of the battle of getting them out of here, whether it's honest with themselves, honest with me. Um, that's where I think that change is going to start with these kids, is, is figuring that out inside, and then just us kind of steering and giving other options to pick from, from than what they've been exposed to at this point. What I want you to do is stick around, don't just leave. If you feel like something's overwhelming and you're just like, man, I really can't handle class right now, there's just too much on my mind, you can let me know that. I'll find another spot for you to kind of hang out for the day. I think it's our job to help them start to, to recognize those internal feelings. I mean, as simple as saying, when you get angry, what do you feel? Do you, how comfortable are you with like talking about how you feel? Usually I don't. You don't, right? I mean, 
And that's, I mean, I'm not saying that part of the responsibility is on him, but part of it is also on you. I mean, you need to learn to advocate for yourself, you know what I mean? If, if something's not going well, and I mean, obviously, in a respectful way, don't walk in there kicking the door and say, hey, listen, prick, sit down. You know what I mean? Like, walk in and, and I mean, really respectfully, especially... Listening to a kid and what actually makes that child tick and then helping steer. I mean, if you're seeing destructive and negative behaviors, obviously, you want to help change those because if a kid can step back and you say, well, how is the direction you're going right now working for you? And they're crying and miserable. Obviously, that's not working. You just can't look at it. It just pisses me off. Do you have a lot of people in your life like that? Or is, I mean, like, literally, yeah. you, have, you do? Well, we need to work on that. A few. I mean, you're not going to like everybody you work with, and certainly you're not going to like everybody you work for on this planet. So we got to figure out a way that, you know what I mean? Like, yes, you're in school, and I'm here to help you get your diploma, but I'm also here because when you grow up and you move away from here, I want you to be successful. When you're wanting to change a child to fit what you want, what your mold is, that's when I would say that's probably not the best direction. I think that everybody's wired differently, and you don't know what somebody's core is pushing them to do. And I think that that's where you start to find what your actual talent, what your strengths are. I can think of two teachers that said you are incredible in their classroom, that you are an absolute leader, and that you pull other kids in and you show them how to do stuff. So I know you're very capable of this. So even though you dislike that, the topic in there, and maybe even have some personal issues with the teacher, I know, one, you're smart enough to do it. There's no question in my mind. I can think of kids that I have intensely loved and I have seen grow in the time that they were in my classroom and walk in with this F you, I'm not doing anything you say attitude. And by the time they were done, I would ask them to do something that I knew they didn't want to do and they would still go and do it. And I knew that the reason they were doing that was because of the relationship that I'd built with them. Reaffirming, like, look, you're a really strong kid. You have a tremendous strength inside of you. You can do this, you know? You're, you're gonna be able to make, make this because you are that strong of a person. We didn't use like, this I see you thinking about it. It always shows like, yes. good understanding. You can unconditionally love kids and be the authoritative figure. This is gonna crush you. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's pop the back here to the 10. That's my favorite lens. Try that. Better? Yeah.